I'm not going to do it. I know you haven't told me what you want me to do, and it doesn't matter what it is. I am not going to do it. Look, I don't really care if you're at war. I'd rather you give up the fight and resolve it peacefully than bring me into it. Wait, where did you get that? I made sure nobody could ever find that again, let alone bring it to me. No. Wait. Wait. I can't. I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to be a weapon again. That's not who I am. No. I am fine being locked away. My freedom never meant much anyways. I just need to be left alone. If telling you my story guarantees that you won't make me fight, only if you promise me that will I talk. Well, I suppose that I can't do much, but trust your word. Where to begin? There was born a long way away from here. Very long ago. There was a laid at the doorstep of a powerful witch. A foundling. She and her four husbands raised me together. Until her most beloved husband died. She started pushing people away, and she had me begin training to join the army and become a warrior. No more normal school, just training the blade. She also did some other bad things, but that's not important. When I was young, I was enrolled into the army. They gave me a primary weapon. The very weapon that you're holding now. Two swords combined into one. One short and one long, with a mechanism in between that allows them to break apart easily. It's a weapon meant for skilled, trained warriors from the land that I came from, and it was imbued with a powerful material that gave it a power based on my bloodline. That sword, in my hands, will do only one thing. Give me the power that I need to win any battle. I fought with fire mages, and my blade drenched the world in ice. I fought champions of darkness, and my blade cut with bright light. No matter who or what... I'm fighting, and I get the power that allows me to win the battle. And that's why people know me as the running death. Once I run at you with that blade in my hands, death has you firmly in its grasp. Yes, very intimidating. I never liked to affiliate with death. It's not meant to be. I am a man who fights for a living, yes, but my goal was never to be an envoy of death. All I ever did was what was asked of me. I fought the battles of kings and queens for them. I guarded emperors, destroyed armies, all because I was told to. But I'm straying off on my own this time. I first saw battle when I was 14 years old. It was one of the old types of battle, where thousands of men protected a single witch as she prepared to cast a spell powerful enough to wipe out the enemy in seconds. 
In my case, it was a witch of light. She summoned a bow made of stars and a golden arrow and shot it into the air. What happened after was... carnage. Thousands of tiny arrows fell from the sky, piercing every part of each enemy's body like needles ripping through paper. They were simply torn to shreds with an implosion of gore. I still have yet to see anything like it since then. It was true horror. Imagine, if you will, being pierced by a thousand and one needles dropped from a mountain's height. Would that be a peaceful death? I don't think it is. The men and women of the opposing army all groaned in pain and left me. Scarred, to say the least. I was brought to the capital to restore my mind, but all they offered was a swift solution before releasing me to the care of yet another witch. And I'd had enough, so I ran off and went to do the one thing that I could. Fight for my land. And so I did. For years, becoming stronger, faster, more powerful. Until finally, the Empress rewarded me with a way to absolutely guarantee my victory in any battle. Immortality. Yes, she could make someone immortal. She used a crystal to cast a spell on me to do so. She called it a tear of heaven, although I'd think of it more as a tear of hell. From that moment forward, I was a weapon to be deployed like any other, moved from one end of the continent to the other, knowing nothing but travel and battle. And then the empire fell anyways, and the next big empire learned about my existence and sought to use my skills. And so they did. And since then, I've been like this. An immortal puppet, to be passed from empire to empire as a sort of ultimate weapon. Each country, empire, or kingdom has given me at least some form of gift, enhancing my body to become a perfect tool of war, a weapon that can keep fighting and turn the odds in the favor of whoever it's fighting for. And that's what I was for hundreds of years, thousands even. Until now, I won't do it anymore. I'm not going to take another life. Oh, the change of heart is anything but sudden. I've never been keen on hurting people. It's just that I'm refusing to get ordered around from now on. Oh, I can see what's going on out there from in here. You build monstrous machines to wage war, all so that you can take out as many people as you can without having to look them in the eyes. You build weapons that can kill another living, breathing person from miles and miles away. You turn war into a soulless, honorless trade where everyone is just looking to get a single hit in on everyone else. Because one hit is enough. You couldn't survive a real battle. You couldn't struggle personally over and over as you stare into someone's eyes as they die. Your mind would break if you watched the light fade in someone's body as you choked them. You've made all these things to make war impersonal, to make it a numbers game. Christ, 
Children are playing games about using these weapons, training to take lives and be okay with that from the moment that they can see a screen. Yes, I was a soldier in an age way before most children here are exposed to such things. But do you really think I'm a good example? I'm a soldier, cursed with immortality, forced to fight one battle after another. And throughout all the time that I have been what I am, I've broken down mentally so many times. So many times more than you can fathom. And yet still, every single fight, I give them the courtesy of letting them get close before I cut through them, if only to let them see who was their undoing. Oh yes, I understand that, little soldier. Your lands are under attack, your crops are being burned, everything is going to hell. But it's not my fight. It never was my fight to begin with. And I'm not turning it into my fight at the behest of someone who has never had to slice through another man's throat. You're all armed to the teeth with weapons that long ago I couldn't even begin to imagine. But in the end, war has changed in one way over time. It's become less and less about soldiers. Wars aren't fought on the ground anymore. They're fought on screens. Showing you who took what land, and where all the units are. And those wars aren't waged by soldiers. They're waged by men in black suits, who don't know what it's like to be where the soldiers are. When a war is won, and the one claiming the victory is not the most powerful warrior, or the person who won the most battles, but the man who never even went to battle. The man who slept in his bed at home every single night. That is not a war I want to fight in. They aren't generals. They are cowards, hiding far away where the horrors of the battlefield can't hurt them. A soldier being taken down is a statistic for them. For me, it's yet another life taken. Oh, my dear. You have so much to learn. It's not my fault if dozens die here. Not even if millions die. I was never responsible for starting the fight. I was never involved at all until right at this very moment. And you expect me to end it for you? To make sure that you all don't get hurt? Don't make me laugh. You should have fled this place a long time ago. If you will, could you please lock the door on your way out? There's a draft. Thank you, kindly. And good luck with your battle. And by the way, if you don't die, perhaps we can talk again. Hello everyone, it's Prince Cairo, and thank you all for listening to another one of my audios. Before you click off, again, thank you for sticking around even though I've been a little bit sparse on the uploads recently. No worries, I'm just figuring a few things out as I transition into doing this job full-time in the next, oh, I guess about two weeks. So thank you all for supporting me. Oh yeah, I should probably mention the fact that I have an upload schedule. Check out the Communities tab if you haven't seen it yet. Also, it's worth mentioning that within this next week or so, my patrons are going to be eating very good over there. Let's just say there's going to be plenty of spicy audios for them to enjoy themselves with. Anyway, now that that's all done, special thank you to all of my patrons, especially that of my precious pets. Creek, Lunar, Finowen, Toka, T. Briscoe, Michelle, and Nikki Pele. All of your support truly does mean the world to me, be a patron or not. 
If you're interested in getting audios early or perhaps not safe for work extras, be sure to check out my link tree. It'll be in the pinned comment down below. Also, and there will be a few of my other socials that I recommend you checking out, including one for interactive fan streams. Thank you all so, so much for all that you do for me. I've been Prince Cairo, and remember that your prince loves you all. Mwah.